iPlant is a plant science community collaboration to build cyber infrastructure, uniting biologists with expertise and resources from computational sciences. This cyber infrastructure will target grand challenges of plant biology, the first of which is the assembly of a comprehensive tree of life for plants, also known as the IPTAL project. The concept of a tree of life was first put forward um, very explicitly by Darwin, even in some of his notes, 20 years or more before the publication of The Origin of Species. And in fact, the only diagram, the only figure in The Origin of Species is actually a phylogenetic tree. And this phylogenetic tree shows um, a branching pattern that depicts our ideas about how species are related to each other. A phylogenetic tree is a display of inferred evolutionary relationships between species. The idea of using a tree to display this information is familiar to anyone who has ever looked at a family tree. A tree is a tool biologists use to examine how species are related based upon shared features. That sort of a challenge of determining the shape of the tree of, of plant history is, is an incredibly difficult challenge, uh, not only in terms of, of, of our ability to gather the data to infer those things, uh, the shape of the tree, but also just the technical aspects of doing the computations needed uh, uh, when you're dealing with that amount of data and the complexity of a tree structure and to determine the shape of that tree is a non-trivial task. And so you really need uh, uh, not only a grand collection of biologists working on this, but, but some novel methods. To compile our own family history, we could talk to our living relatives. We could look through old scrapbooks or search out census or other government records. We can do similar things to investigate where plants came from. We can examine biodiversity, we can look at the fossil record, and we can see how DNA sequences give evidence of interrelatedness. The more data we get, the more we realize that it's actually a lot harder than we might have thought it would be. Um, I think that one day we thought that having full genome sequences from everything would actually just give us the tree of life right there. It would be sitting right in front of us. And it turns out the data are a lot more complicated and evolution doesn't always happen in the ways that we might have thought that it would. For decades, biologists have used phylogenetic trees to understand relationships amongst hundreds of species. However, iPlant will assemble the computational resources to make a tree vast enough to incorporate all plants, perhaps more than 500,000 species. The, the fundamental goal of the iPlant Tree of Life, or IPTAL, uh, is to understand the evolutionary relationships between plants. Right? When we talk about building a tree of life to eventually understand, for all the plants that we have, maybe half a million green plants on the planet, um, how they evolved. There's actually many things we can learn and many kinds of analysis we can do from building that kind of tree. Um, but one of the things we can understand is where really useful features evolved. Although phylogenetic trees are a map that can guide biologists in understanding the ancient history of organisms, there are immediate and practical uses to what a plant tree of life can tell us today about how to improve the plants that are important to us for food, fuel, and countless other products. If you have two species that are, are two taxa that, have, that are closely related to each other, and a third one that you're not quite sure about, you might explore phylogenetic relationships to look for species with the trait of interest like disease resistance. We could look for new crops this way, for example. So there's many applications of the tree. We probably know about 10% of the species that actually live on Earth. That other 90% is harboring all sorts of very interesting, among other things, chemistry. A very nice example of this just emerged through a phylogenetic analysis of an unknown fungus, where it was discovered that this thing actually makes octane uh, in degrading cellulose. And this was a, a fungus that was found living inside of a tropical tree uh, in uh, Ecuador. And uh, it's just one example of presumably hundreds of examples of funny unknown organisms, biodiversity, that will yield products that will actually uh, save the day. Biodiversity actually forms the basis of many of the technical innovations that will come along in the next decades that will actually make our lives not, even, not only better, but even possible to live.